The path to building superintelligence requires us to unlock the most fundamental secrets of the universe. Professor? We're looking at five weeks before a system shuts down. When I'm gone, keep moving forward. I want to let you go. We can upload his consciousness. We can save him. Not like this. If we missed anything, how will you know who you're dealing with? Oh my god. It's like, like my, my mind, mind has been set free. Your friends, they don't know the danger. If she connects to the internet, the first thing it'll do is copy itself. And then there is no taking it down. The real will died. This has gone too far, Will. Stop it! I don't understand. This is the future. This is not our future. This whole movie is about the development, ultimate development, of artificial intelligence. Yeah, it talks a lot about what's happening with technology in, 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 in our world and, and what it means to us as individuals and as a society. And that old saying about power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's ultimately what we feel we're dealing with. How far are we going to let that impact on our lives and can we control it? And all of those questions. You can't put absolute power in one person's hand. Whatever work, because however good that one person is and however much good they want to do, it's going to wind up doing more bad than good. For 130,000 years, our capacity for reason has remained unchanged. The combined intellect of the neuroscientists, engineers, mathematicians, and hackers <laughs> in this auditorium pales in comparison to even the most basic AI. Once online, a sentient machine will quickly overcome the limits of biology. And in a short time, its analytical power will be greater than the collective intelligence of every person born in the history of the world. So now imagine such an entity with a full range of human emotion, even self-awareness. Some scientists refer to this as the singularity. I call it transcendence. At the center of all of this um, stuff about technology and computers was this fairly complicated relationship. Transcendence is really about the relationship between Evelyn Castor and Will Castor. My partner in science and in life, Dr. Will Castor. Now how that relationship evolves throughout the movie. He wants to advance um, evolving artificial intelligence pace. and is, is, you know, is quite successful. At the beginning of it, they're a loving couple, scientists working to better the planet. He's deeply hated by an uh, extremist group. His ideas are potentially going to ruin the world. Tragedy strikes. Professor? After Will Castor is shot, Will and Evelyn make the decision that the only way, as Will is dying, to keep any part of him alive is to upload his brain to the supercomputer. This has never been done before. They go about convincing Max Waters, who's very skeptical of it, that this is something um, that, they should, that he should help them with. Um, and it's the only way to keep part of Will Castor alive. So these are state-of-the-art quantum processors. You won't find faster computational power anywhere else in the world. Good evening, Dr. Tagger. I see an old faculty picture. <laughs> Good evening, Donald Buchanan. It knows me. Of course it does. DMV records, social media. Pin, tell Agent Buchanan about yourself. I am Pin, a physically independent neural network invented by Dr. Will Castor. Can you prove that you are self-aware? That's a difficult question, Dr. Tagger. Can you prove that you are? It's an extraordinary cast, really. I mean, uh, kind of a dream cast. And for me to work with all of these guys has been such a pleasure. Uh, you know, Johnny Depp has been a hero of mine, you know, since I was a kid before I ever wanted to be an actor. And to actually get to do scenes with him was, you know, a real, a real honor. and. Uh, you know, people like Paul Bettany and uh, Rebecca Hall, just tremendous actors whose who work I've admired over the years also. And then Morgan, uh, who I'd never actually worked with, but our done scenes when we've been in films together, and he's such a legend. And what's lovely about it is that the atmosphere and set is, is so warm and uh, so 
much. Everyone's so chilled out, you know? And uh, uh, so it's a lovely... Uh, uh, it's a lovely atmosphere to work in. Will Cost is played by this little-known actor called Johnny Depp. Not many people have heard of him. The character of Evelyn is played by an amazing actress, Rebecca Hall. Uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's Johnny Depp. Um, what can I say about Johnny Depp? I was very thrilled and fortunate to be able to, to work with Johnny Depp on the project. Um, and uh, uh, he, he really... He brought something to it that I never imagined. He's kind of amazing. He's uh, uh, wonderfully relaxed, seemingly without any ego at all. He's, he's incredibly smart and he's incredibly intuitive and attentive to the script and he wants, he wants the best and he, he's also incredibly funny, so he's a joy to work with. One of the great things is for an audience seeing Johnny as Johnny and we haven't seen him in a long time uh, where he's not playing somebody else. He's playing a computer scientist in here, but Johnny's an intelligent man, so he does it very comfortably. You see his work. You see how much fun he apparently has doing the stuff that he does. And I think he, he's also got a, a warmth and a charisma that's, uh, uh, that's undeniable that we see in the screen in the beginning of the movie and, and is kind of uh, key to, to, the, to the love story. Those are really good drawing cards for actors. It's a very powerful, heavy, heavy, difficult part to play. Uh, and Rebecca did a phenomenal job. She's cleverer than Johnny, Wally, and I all put together. She's an Oxford girl, you know? She's smart as a whip. But she, does, she also doesn't bash you over the head with it. You know, anything and everything she says, she's just a very, very smart girl. Um, and very, very funny. Look, it's all built off of Casey's solution to the self-awareness problem. He did it six months ago. He did what exactly? Instead of creating an artificial intelligence, he duplicated an existing one. Tell me you're joking. He recorded Tell the monkey's brain activity and uploaded its consciousness like a song or a you're movie. Out of your mind. Will's body is dying, but his mind is a pattern of electrical signals that we can upload into pen. He can. If he he's can not a monkey. Assuming that implanting an electrode into his brain doesn't actually kill him, and that this works. At the very best, you'll be making a digital approximation of him. If we missed anything, anything, a thought, a, a, a childhood memory, how will you know what you're dealing with? No one is saying that we give up, but we should be focusing our efforts on nanotechnology, synthetic blood cells. Both are decades away. This is what we have now. We can save him. Transcendence is where the AI technology transcends the human race and we evolve into a computer age. The technological sing singularity is a hypothetical event in the future where a computer will transcend the capacity of mankind's intellect. So that, by definition, becomes what happens after the singularity, what happens after transcendence, by definition is unimaginable because, uh, because a computer is gonna have an intellect beyond the imagination of a human. Some people theorize that it's a part of evolution, that humanity is always going to merge with technology. But then of course there are people who are on the flip side of it and that think that the, even the idea of the singularity is dangerous. Rift. So two years ago, it was all about the disconnect. People texting instead of actually talking to each other. Social media as an invasion of privacy. They made a big deal of putting smartphones in blenders. But I'm afraid we all missed the real threat. Yeah. This guy, Joel Edman, was with me for a year. The guy who shot Will was working on campus since August. They infiltrated their targets and then coordinated their attacks. That's insane. An hour ago, they claim the murders and release their manifesto. Artificial intelligence is an unnatural abomination and a threat to humanity. They're determined to stop any attempt at what you call transcendence. Max is played by Paul Bettany. He's uh, another Brit, which is nice. He's great. He's, I've always admired him, actually. I think he's a, a really uh, brilliant actor. And you can tell that he's very smart, I think, on screen. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised that that's true in life as well. Most of my scenes are with Paul Bettany and he um, 
has been so lovely and he's so talented and he really cares about the story. He's not just in his own world and he's a real team player and that's, you know, the best kind of actor. I had seen her uh, um, in House of Cards and she, in which she's amazing and she is no less amazing in this. And she's just, she's just great. And she's real from the moment, you know, there's, not, there's never a take where you don't go, uh, yeah, I use, I use the whole take, you know, it's just, she's just always on the whole time. Tell me about Evelyn Castor. We know she took the pink cores and we know about Casey's files. We know what you're building. You don't get it, do you? She connects to the internet, the first thing it'll do is copy itself onto every single network computer in the world and then there is no taking it down. Where is she? The danger we face is a future where doctors are technicians, not physicians. Machines are meant to aid the human mind, not supplant it. There are your words. Do you want to save her or not? We have a location, 4550 San Pablo. Let's go! Uh, Let's uh, go! Uh, I don't touch her! Do you hear me? Don't touch her! Beginning of the film, one of the scientists has made a breakthrough such that you don't have to program a computer to be self-aware, but you can download an existing intelligence. And that causes Rift to sort of go over the edge. Rift stands for Revolutionary Independence from Technology. And basically, the group uh, is an anti-technology group. Um, they're somewhat loosely based on neo-Luddites. And they feel firmly uh, that any advancement in technology could potentially lead to the demise of, of, uh, of humankind. Uh, and it's a rather extreme view. Um, but it is based on, on things that we can all relate to. The, the, overwhelming invasion of social media, of technology just sort of getting in the way. But of course, their greatest fear uh, is the singularity. And the greatest fear of the members of Rift is that this supercomputer is going to eventually take over the world and render humanity obsolete. Get me online. I need more power. Where are you going? Everywhere. I'm not the kind of actor that's good at doing scenes on the telephone when someone's not there, you know? So if I'm gonna have to spend half of this film, you know, acting with the script supervisor doing the lines while I look at a green screen, I'm not gonna be able to do it because I'm just not that kind of actor. And um, I was scared and I had a conversation with Wally and, and he convinced me when he said, you'll always be acting with Johnny. He said, we'll have Johnny in, a sep in, in the studio in a separate room We'll be videoing him live and it will go straight to the monitor and we'll shoot the monitor and we'll do conventional coverage. So we'll do you and then we'll shoot the TV screen. And I thought, well, no one's ever done that before. This is crazy. There's no CGI involved. There's no sort of special effects, anything. I'm actually talking to Johnny and he's in the TV screen. Once you've uploaded Will's mind, how will you know it's really him? An AI is like any intelligence. It will start to evolve. Whose side are you on? His or ours? The wonderful national treasure, Morgan Freeman, is playing Joseph Taggart. My name is Joseph Taggart, and I'm, um, I'm an old computer expert. I've been working for years on developing artificial intelligence. And so, the, once again, the warmth that Morgan brings to the screen, uh, I think, immediately uh, engages the audience. And, uh, and was such a comfort factor on the set as well. What's wonderful about the script is that it, it, it portrays all of the different arguments and all of the different sides uh, um, very fairly. And I guess Buchanan represents the government, you know, and the FBI and what. And uh, what or how would the government react in a situation like this if this were to happen? And uh, we wanted to, obviously, he has to toe that government line, but I think he's a smart kid, you know, he's, he knows all this tech side of, uh, of the world, of that world very well. And, you know, he has some sort of objectivity on the thing, despite being, you know, representing the government. And I think towards the end of the movie, you begin to see that. He begins to think for himself a bit more. The facility is five stories down so that we can control the temperature in the lab. Welcome. 
We're glad you're here. Jesus Christ. Well? You surprised to see me, Joseph. Um, that depends. On what? Can you prove you're self-aware? That's a difficult question, Dr. Tiger. Can you prove that you are? It's science fantasy, I think. Yeah, it uh, could very well be the future of artificial intelligence. There was a lot of research done, um, lots of books. We read a lot of books. Um, and I had a secret weapon. My wife is a computer scientist, and so, and so I would be drafting, I would be writing, and I would, she would be working in the front room, and, and I would call to her, I'm like, can Will do this, or can Will do that? And she was like, yeah, sure, but if you change it like this. So she was very, very, she was very, very helpful in, in, in it. We did a fair bit of research, and we talked to a lot of different uh, people in this field, and what was astounding to us was how advanced technology was and how close we were and things that I had always thought were just science fiction uh, as being a reality. There are professors at UC Berkeley that we've uh, spent a lot of time with. There's a lot of material out there right now and uh, it was very difficult for us to just kind of hone in on the right people to talk to. I feel like we got very lucky. Um, we had been talking about this idea for a long, long, long time, so it was really, it was really exciting to have an opportunity to really execute it. You've got terrible handwriting. I haven't handwritten anything since I was at school. But if it's the only secure way I could think of reaching you. How did they turn you? How's Evelyn? She can't see it for what it is. But you can. Your letter says you can stop it. If those hybrids are networked, they're running on software I helped write, software I can hack to build a virus. Well, that would require capturing one. Which would require help from your friends in the government. Yeah. We need hardware the machine can't interfere with. Nothing with a microchip, not even power locks. Video's marked. And action! What was interesting for me uh, to see in terms of Wally, uh, you know, Fister, the director, I mean, and, you know, with his, in terms of his approach, how would it be, you know, as a, I mean, a, a, a well-seasoned and, and extremely uh, brilliant cinematographer, how would this transition go, you know? And I was, I was really happy to, uh, to observe. I have never worked with a first-time director that has as much experience as he has. All of us feel really honored to be on his first, uh, his first feature, is his maiden voyage. So he has all this sort of um, enthusiasm and optimism, I guess, of a first-time filmmaker and the experience of someone who's been doing it for years. The fact that it's his first directing gig is crazy to me. Um, it really feels like he's been doing it forever. He's incredibly gifted with, with narrative. He knows how to tell a story. He's obviously been making movies for a very long time and some really, you know, working with some really great people and he's really clearly been watching and listening because he runs a great set. You know, you want to work with people that you admire and people you have a relationship with and he's such a tremendous um, DP but also just a tremendous communicator and uh, and proved to be a wonderful director as well. And cut. In general terms, it's a very smart uh, blockbuster. I mean, it, it has all the elements that a, a good blockbuster should have. I mean, you know, it's it's got thriller aspects and it's got set pieces and it's got an amazing cast. And, uh, but it also, I hope, makes you think, you know, and asks questions of the audience. What makes us human and how much we can merge with technology and still remain human and how much that might cause us problems um, in terms of how we define ourselves and what identity is and all these things which I think are very, very pertinent issues in our increasingly technological times. You can watch it on that level or you can watch it as, you know, a very entertaining sci-fi film as well.